Hey guys, and welcome back to how to make elements from household materials. Now, today's element is going to be strontium. And strontium is actually mainly used as a pigment uh, color for fireworks. Um, so, it's uh, the compound is strontium chloride, and it's used in fireworks which shoot up, and then they blow up, and anything that's red will be uh, compounds of strontium. Uh, that's deep red, though. If it's a lighter red, it's normally a lithium-based compound. Anyhow, so inside one of these simple rockets here, there is a cap which you stick in, uh, well th this part's useless, but um, you stick that into the ground, and then inside of there, there's a little tube, which is about right there, and then behind this tube is some black powder, and so when that goes off in this confined space, it shoots this up really high into the air, and there's a small fuse inside of here, and it ignites the mixture at the top, which blows to pieces, and there's some strontium chloride in the top here, which is what we're going to be using. Now, not all um, types of fireworks will have this, and from my experience, fireworks do not just say red on them. There's no real identification of the color. Uh, so it might be difficult to find a firework which actually contains some strontium chloride, but if you... Um, Take it apart and just test off a teeny piece in a flame or something, and if it's a deep red, then it's probably strontium chloride. So, I'm going to take this part and show you the different components on the inside of the piece that gets launched up to the sky. We can save this black powder for future experiments or something, but we're not going to be using it today. Okay, so inside of that tiny shell, there's some uh, clay powder with a fuse, and the fuse runs up, and this would be as it's being ejected super high into the air. Now, when it hits this powder over here, I believe that's some more gunpowder, but I believe it's mixed in with some aluminum powder to cause some sort of, like, glittering effect. So when it hits that, it blows up, and then here's our strontium chloride here, uh, or I'm not sure if it's strontium chloride yet because they were flame tested it, but um, it's some sort of compound which gives the color. So that's how that particular type of firework worked. And I don't know how different fireworks are going to work because obviously different models are going to be different compositions and stuff. Now you do have to be extremely careful with flame testing any stuff like this because this might be flammable, I'm not sure. Anyhow, so I'm going to take apart, it came in a package of 20, so I'm going to take apart a bunch of them, flame test them all, and anything that turns out to be red, uh, deep red, which will be strong to chloride, I'm going to put aside into a larger vial and um, I'll be back once I have a bunch of strong team chloride. Okay, so I went through all those fireworks, and anything that burned with the bright red color, um, I put in some water. Now, this is because I didn't actually do a flame test um, as much as I just simply set it on fire. Which means there's a reaction happening, and there's some other ingredients to make the strontium chloride react. Um, so, so that it can combust on its own. And I don't have a clue what they are, I tried to do research, couldn't find too much on it. So, I just threw everything in water. Now strontium is soluble, so, sorry, strontium chloride is soluble in water, so it will dissolve, and um, I'm assuming there's some sort of thing like potassium nitrate in there or something, um, and I, I don't know, something else to react with potassium nitrate, so it'll burn on its own, and uh, then the strontium chloride is probably there just to um, um, give the red color. So, uh, something is insoluble because it's clouded up the solution and... Uh, you can see at the bottom it's collected down there, but everything else is dissolved. Now you happen to know that potassium nitrate is not as soluble in um, cold water as in warm water. So we're going to go ahead and cool this down, quite cold, and hopefully we'll precipitate out some potassium nitrate crystals. And But first we're going to filter off whatever's insoluble here. I don't know what that is, it's something. Anyhow, then we'll be left with our solution of pretty much mainly just um, uh, strontium chloride which is what I'm hoping. So, then we'll be able to boil that down and get the pure crystals. So I'm going to try to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I discarded the potassium nitrate uh, just because um, it's probably impure with other things that were used in the um, uh, fireworks, but um, here's what's fairly pure strong team chloride, and I'm hoping it's going to work for this application. So we don't have a whole huge amount, but we still have a fair bit. And it did cost a lot more than you would commercially get it for. And in a flame, you can see it has a beautiful um, reddish color to it. Well, that's kind of sodium looking. 
It might be some sodium contamination. Let's get a bit more on there and try this again. You can clearly see the red color. And there appears to be some sodium contamination just from the bright um, orange that comes off after all the strontium is gone. But that shouldn't matter too much. And I'm going to follow forward with the reaction anyhow. Um, and we're going to try this out. Now, a way to uh, produce uh, strontium uh, metal is with the electrolysis of strontium chloride. And mix them with some ammonia though. So we're going to have to get, uh, sorry, ammonium chloride, not ammonia. So we're going to have to make some ammonium chloride. So for now, we're just going to leave this to the side and make some ammonium chloride. So I'm going to get those materials ready, and I'll join you back in a moment. Okay, so I'm actually sorry. I was greatly mistaken. It is not ammonium chloride you use. That is what they use for the production of barium. So with barium, that is how I plan on doing it, because um, barium chloride is also used in fireworks to give a green color. So if you did see any green colors um, in your fireworks, save that powder also because in a future video we'll isolate barium from that. So anyhow, what we actually need for the strontium chloride, how uh, you can produce it through electrolysis, is potassium chloride. So here is some um, potassium chloride. Now this is sold as salt-free salt. So that just means there's no sodium chloride in it. Uh, it's potassium chloride instead. So you can buy this, I got this particular one from Thrifties, and I wasn't actually able to figure out anything online that showed um, exactly the ratios for this electrolysis, so I'm just going to do half and half by weight. So I'm going to weigh out how much strontium chloride we have, and then do the equivalent of potassium chloride. Then we're going to set up a small electrolysis cell and electrolyze it. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we just have this little uh, electrolysis unit set up, and you can see that we have our salt in there. Now, these electrodes are not touching the bottom, and they actually curve in towards each other. Um, and there's a small gap in between the two. And that's where the electrolysis will occur. Now, this mixture should melt at about 870 degrees Celsius, because that's when strontium chloride melts. Potassium chloride melts at about 670 degrees Celsius. Um, so once the mixture is molten, I'm not sure if the melting point will change or not, but I'm hoping that the current that we put through this thing will keep it uh, molten. So you can see we have the two wires which come up, and they just form these loops around to hold it in place. So one, uh, one of our terminals gets hooked up there, the other one comes around and gets hooked up over here. And the two wires are not touching in any way. So I'm really hoping this is going to work, and we'll just fire up the blowtorch and melt it down. So I'll meet you outside. And I'm really hoping we're going to get some strontium metal. Okay, so as you can see, it's heated up to a liquid. And there's a little glowing dot in the center where the electrolysis has happened. And a couple of flashes every now and then. So we are producing strontium metal. And it is just combusting in the air so rapidly because it's exposed to the air. And it's really hot. So I'm hoping that I'm going to get some strontium out of this. And I'll show you the results when we're done. So I took the uh, piece of it off the one electrode and it's vigorously bubbling. You can see the steady stream of bubbling coming from that one. The other one is not bubbling at all because that was from the other electrode. So we actually did make strong to metal and I'm so excited about that. So I'm going to repeat this a few more times and actually not put it in water the next few times and save some and we'll actually have some strong to metal. And, you know, this is amazing. We made some from fireworks. So I'll meet you back inside once I made some more. Okay, is that... <clears throat> Sorry, that teeny little rock is actually strontium metal. It's a very teeny amount uh, because when I was electrolyzing that solution, any strontium that touched the air was actually liquid and burst into flames. So only the stuff that was in the solution that managed to solidify in the solution was able to be recovered in these really teeny chunks. Now I have another piece in here, if you could see it, see you could see it right there, that little speck. And that's a nicer sample of strontium, and it is a bit larger, just the curvature of the test tube makes it look odd. So that's what I'm going to be using in my element sample. This, I'm just going to show you the reactivity of it in this water here. So if we drop it down, we should be able to get a little stream of bubbles com coming shortly. I'll be back. First the mineral oil has to be come off of it because I did keep it under mineral oil for a bit. So I'll be back once it starts fizzing after I swirled the solution to get the mineral oil off. Okay, so you can really see that. Oh, and there. It appears to be done. 
So Strunky Metal does react quite vigorously, as you just saw. That was actually a larger chunk than what it originally put in, because it went out and made some more, but under a vacuum. Um, because, well, there's a vacuum, there's actually no air. And because there's no air, it can't oxidize. You can get much larger chunks, which react a lot more vigorously. And now, I, w I will repeat that process and get a larger sample, which I might show in a future video. But, I'm actually going to make a video first on how to make a vacuum uh, electrolysis thingy set up. Um, so anyhow, look for that in an upcoming video. And I hope you enjoyed making that small amount of um, strong tier metal. And I do have a larger amount, and in a future video, I will show you a larger amount. Anyhow, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Wait, remember, be careful, because not all fireworks are the same, and some may contain different chemical makeups than what I showed. Wait, hope you enjoyed. Bye.